Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Technically Brilliant Show, which is a co-production of Denton Black Film Festival and Black Public Media. Today, our guest is Fabiana Michu, a filmmaker and artist who lives and works in Brazil. Let's bring on Fabiano. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for having me today. Oh, our pleasure. Um, nice to see you. I know you were recently on a break, so welcome back to Civilization. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so today we're just going to talk about um, your background and training, and then we're going to move into a conversation about your current project, which is Monacapuru VR, which was the uh, teaser that we just gave people um, showed people about the project. So first up, um, when did you first start developing an interest in technology? And when you were in high school, like, you know, did they offer classes at the high school level or did they have clubs or anything like that? No, actually, no, I didn't have any, any um, tech school at, at this time. I first uh, was really interested in art. Uh, so I went to the art school. Uh, but when I uh, went there, I realized that the people and professors uh, um, thought my work were more uh, film-oriented than, than art. Okay. And then, then I started uh, uh, studying film, and the people I realized that people uh, have had the same impression, uh, but in the opposite way. So they told me your work is more artist uh, than, than film. So, so did this, did that start happening from high school or it only happened once you went to college? No, after, uh, after high school. Okay, uh, got it. My interest in for, for film and arts and everything. Got and it. So I, I'm in between uh, and I love this position, to be honest. Uh, I like art and, and, and film. Uh, mostly, and that brought me to new technologies like uh, XR, virtual reality, augmented reality, and so on. Right. Uh, but Do you remember way, when you first saw a virtual reality experience? Like, was that back in high school or was it in college? No, that was in Berlin in 2012, if I'm, if I'm sure. It was in, in the Berlinale Film Festival. And um, it was a really a, a small uh, 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 opening show uh, for VR. Uh, these days, uh, it was not it was not not uh, so fancy. Right. Like, what what caught your like? Why did it you know capture your attention? Yeah, for me, it was the eyes, the looking, the gaze. Uh, I, when I first saw uh, someone starting at me actually at the camera but it, it felt like uh, the, the the gaze was to me it was really intense and uh something happened to me and, and mm -hmm. I, I first realized the potential of the medium and and also what what could be developed uh in, in storytelling uh, right there. So, so did that what were you doing in berlin in 2012 Oh yeah, I studied film there. I went to Berlin in 2010 um, to uh, graduate in, in, uh, in a film school. I okay. Directing uh, there for four years or, or more or less. Got it. Got it. So you were so but while you were in grad school. How long was your grad school? It was from 2010 to 2014. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I first um, started studying in film uh, arts in, in Rio de Janeiro in a, a famous art school. I got a fellowship there and then I went to the university in Rio, uh, a film university. But it, it was for me uh, too academic and, 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 and I, 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 I was more uh, uh convinced to to to, to to make works and i went to berlin and i uh, got uh, this this uh, school which is a self-organized school uh, in berlin where we could uh, approach many experiments and, and and technical aspects of film got it and, so are you saying that you went to two different grad schools like you started at one and then you changed your mind and went yeah, to a different exactly. one 
I started in, in Rio and finished in Berlin. Okay. You started where? In Berlin. No, where was the first place that you started? Was it a different city from Berlin? It was in Rio de Janeiro. It was in a PUC university. Oh, you started art school in, in Rio and then went to Berlin to go to the experimental film school. Yeah, exactly. And to film okay, school. got it. I just wanted to, yes, for your FBI file, sorry to put it in there. Um, all right, so once you now have both undergraduate degree in film and now a graduate degree in film from a experimental program, what did you, what was your vision at that point in terms of what you wanted to do with your career? I, um, it's something I, I discovered, uh, by the time just doing my work and, uh, but my work is very, uh, historical oriented. Uh, uh, doesn't matter if I make film or art, uh, it has always a historical aspect inside. Uh, and this process uh, really, really uh, got me uh, to work. That is what, what brings me forward. And um, that is what I, what I feel. I, I think uh, being uh, to be between those, those, uh, uh, forms, film like and tech. Yeah, form. I like the hybrid forms very much. And you like hybrid? Okay. Well, why don't we? Why don't you tell us what Monica Peru VR is about, and then we'll watch your pitch video from April at the BPM Plus Showcase. Yeah, Monica Peru VR is a it's a um, um, collective art making experience uh, which invites users uh, to destroy. Uh, images, or, uh, historical images of Brazil, from Brazil. And um, the idea is that uh, the people are going to discover that collective. So uh, the hope is uh, just uh, a way uh, to get the people and that interaction uh, with historical uh, aspects of, of Brazil colonialism and, and so on. Okay. Uh, why don't we take a look at the pitch video? Yes. Gotcha. I forgot I have to hit share. Share. No, whoops. Nope. Share screen. Sure. All right. Tab. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Manacapuru VR is a daring experiment in the making of collective art. It invites users to destroy images from Brazil's history in an experience that is part physical art installation, part VR collage. The intention of this experience is to invite the public to uncover centuries of Brazilian history encapsulated in seven images, seven layers, each one hiding the next, images that are never totally seen or totally uncovered and that overlap others like the effect that the passing of time has on our lives and memories. Manacapuru VR starts in a real world gallery with a big wall. This wall is covered by a big sheet of paper with a rip in it. Behind this paper, there are seven other layers, each one shows a different pattern. Reality and translated into images when users have their headsets on. When the public arrives in the gallery, they will see the blank paper wall. With the VR headset on, they will see the same wall and they will be invited to discover what is behind the lid by tearing it down and revealing what lies beneath. The VR version of the wall saves the actions of each user so that the next person will pick up where the previous one left off. The end of one user's experience becomes the beginning of the next user's starting point. Each user will have seven minutes of experience. If a user decides to tear a lot of it down, less will be left for those who follow them. An analogy of the limited natural resources that we use recklessly. By tearing down the paper, the user reveals a wall of interactive audiovisual fragments that we are calling memories. Memories cover the foundation and development of Brazilian society. Brazil's most important economic cycles in the past should became gold mines, coffee, and nowadays soybeans were based in the exploitation of nature and people. 
users will discover images of a burning forest, a mine wall collapsing, newspaper advertisements selling black people, striking images that have good position and power over false centers. From the country's huge African diaspora to its present day, from climate catastrophe to recent episode of old fashioned European fascism, being reborn for internet culture. This memory is meant to be the nightmares of a nation whose present is a result of slavery and whose economic system takes environmental destruction and people exploitation as progress. Manakapuru VR's final piece of art will be the product of how people interact with memories, with destruction, and recreation. It's unique and unpredictable. A black public media grant enabled Manakapuru VR to complete an initial research and project definition phase between October 2020 and April 2021. Now, we need resources to go to a research and development phase focused on typecasting and to start production. Research and development will take three months and cost $43,000. Production will take nine months and cost $317,000. Manakapuru VR needs a total budget of $360,000 and 12 months to be created. In Manakapuru VR, destruction becomes the method of creation, much like the formation of Brazil itself. What does it mean to destroy a country? And what does it take to build one? Great. I haven't watched that in full since in a while. Um, it's a really good pitch video. I thought your team did a really excellent job on it. Um, so which headsets will that experience work on? We are going to work with uh, Oculus Quest and the project are going to be developed in the Unity. That's Got it. Um, and so are you a coder yourself? No, no, I'm not coder, unfortunately. We are working with uh, other people together and collaborators and uh, making some experiments uh, with paper as well. So the analogic side of uh, the work uh, has been improved as well. Uh, but uh, we, are, we are seeking for uh, support uh, to, to, to continue developing this work. Got it. So what kind of developers do you need if, aside from Unity? Do you, is there a specific language that you're using or just Unity? Yeah, for now, we, we are working with Unity and uh, it's uh, C8. Um, C sharp? C sharp, yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Um, and so can you read code? Are you like code literate? Like, can you actually proof code yourself or see what it's doing? Or you are, you know, what, where is your, where does the border light lie for you in terms of building your projects? Yeah, uh, that is something I miss, to be honest, as an artist uh, working with technologies. I think I should uh, have uh, abilities to code, uh, but it's also amazing to work with collaborators. It's like uh, when I am a director and working and be working with a writer. So the, the project become uh, becomes more uh, 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 has more uh, perspectives and, and this could be more rich. Uh, so uh, got it. Why don't you describe to me, so if I see the Monica Puru booth at a film festival or at a museum, talk, talk me through the experience. I walk into the booth, what happens next? So uh, the first, uh, you're going to see the wall. A wall uh, and the public and the audience will be invited to uncover this uh, seven layers of paper. And uh, which one is behind the next and it, uh, each one represents an image, a uh, historical image of Brazil. So you are going to have uh, seven minutes, about seven minutes, uh, to rip part of, of, of uh, this paper down. And that is a unique experience because the next one are going to see what you left behind. Uh, okay. Making At what point do I put the headset on? When I first walk into the booth and I see the paper, yes, what, that, yes. That's a part uh, uh, physical installation and part uh, VR collage. That okay. means 
uh, we are we have both uh, to be experienced there. So you are going to really rip uh, down with your hands the paper, the physical paper. Physical paper, okay. Physical paper, but uh, in the glasses, in the virtual reality glass, you are going to see uh, what exactly what this paper represents as an image. So, okay, got it. So basically, I have, I'm seeing something you've designed inside the headset, but at the same time, it doesn't block me from seeing the real world is still visible through the headset. Exactly. Each paper okay. is reflected in virtual reality and represents uh, a, 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 a part of aspect, historical aspect of Brazil. Okay. So it's really a mixed reality piece, not so much a pure virtual reality piece. Exactly. I, okay. I like to see that as a node. Uh, this work is uh, works for me like a node uh, between the virtual world, world and, and the physical world. Got it. A node between the virtual world and the physical world. I like that. So what is the next phase of the project? In the video, it said something about doing um, more research and development and moving into production. What Describe to us what you'd like to accomplish during that phase. Yes, exactly. We have, we, we're still working on research process because, yes, uh, it's, it's, it's a part of the history we lost. So we have some challenge to find these pictures and to, to find this, these images. Uh, but we are moving now uh, to to the first experiments uh, with with uh, the paper, uh, the analogic analogic part, and we are seeking for support uh, to go to development process to really go deep in, in in the in the process of programming and development. Got it. Um, how long do you think that sort of pre-production phase will last? Pre-production phase uh, is about uh, three months. And okay. Totally, we have. 12 months uh, production uh, to have the uh, piece ready. Got it, got it. So what advice would you give um, to other filmmakers and especially traditional visual artists, you know, like painters and, you know, sculptors who want to actually start to use technologies like virtual reality or augmented reality to tell stories? What advice would you have for them? I would say uh, something like, Break the frame. Uh, you have to break the frame uh, and go deep in this uh, new virtual reality world. Uh, and, 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 and just just uh, follow your instincts and your your um, intimate uh, projects. That's that's. Okay. And where do you recommend that people start to? expose themselves, you know, to VR and AR? Like where are the, some places for them to discover um, other pieces? Uh, we have a, a lot of films and works in, in YouTube uh, available for free, but we have also, uh, especially in the pandem pan pandemic times, a bunch of festivals uh, uh, opening uh, the screens and the programs online. So. Uh, Look, look it out, uh, maybe you can find Tribeca Sundance Film Festival's uh, program available. It's really Got cool. it. So what do you, um, what would, has your vision for um, the project changed since you pitched it at the BPM Plus Showcase in April? Like, is there anything that you are thinking you want to add to the project or explore with the project, you know, in coming months? Yes, um, it's, it's still uh, under under process, but I have been also um, adding um, AR technologies uh, to oh, okay. this project. Uh, so uh, we are thinking about a version uh, of uh, Mana Kapuru in AR. It's, it's okay, that would be exciting. Long, I cannot talk a lot. A lot totally. About just want it, you know, it's been a couple of months, so that's why I just wanted to do a check in. And um, are you working on any other projects? Aren't you working on another AR project? Yes, exactly. I'm in the uh, I'm the fellow of Black Public Media and MIT uh, Doc Lab fellow, and I have been developing mesh memories. 
which is uh, augmented reality uh, portrait uh, of Mãe Beata de Omanjá. And we are in the last, uh, in the last uh, uh, weeks of work. I hope in a month we have it ready. Oh, wow. Okay. When did you start to work on it? I started in January uh, working on, on it and, uh, together. So it's been six months. Six months, yeah. How, did the, while you were doing the fellowship, did the vision for the Mother Beata piece change at all? Oh, a lot. We have been uh, experimenting with a lot of, uh, we have a lot of versions of the work, but especially because, again, we don't have a, 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 a really big uh, archive. We have just some photos. It's difficult to work with, uh, but we are getting there uh, where we are happy. And Got it. Are you just using still photographs for that AR piece or are you also using video? Just still photograph. Uh, okay. And what are you, um, which AR platform are you using or is are you having your developer custom code something for you? Yeah, we are going to uh, exhibit the work in Kia codes. Uh, that's okay. Here yeah, we don't want to uh, create an app, a separate app. Uh, we would like to put it so so uh, public or so open as possible, and um, yeah, I forgot the question. Uh, maybe uh, I was asking you um, what platforms you were going to use, or are you having your developer custom code a solution for yeah. mesh memories? Yes, that's that's the point. We are going to create QR codes and exhibit it in public spaces. The idea is okay. a kind of a boost, uh, virtual uh, virtual uh, boost of Mambiata Yamanja Yamanja in public spaces. Okay, where so what, with this AR bus, do you already have a site? Is it going to be tied to a specific geographic location, like coordinates, or will it be something that I can pull up on my phone here from Atlanta? Yeah, if you have, uh, it's a, a site specific because we need, uh, yeah, uh, the QR code to access that. I don't want to put it uh, online. It, the, the the place has a meaning, but okay. we are also planning uh, to have uh, the first one and maybe the main. Uh, uh, site specific in her temple, in the Beata Jamanja temple, so the people could also ask us uh, uh, aspect of, of her in, in an art form. In her okay, temple. and who was Mother Beata? Why are you focusing on her for this uh, this AR sculpture? Mãe Beata Jamanja is a, a religion, a, a African Brazilian religion lead, leader, a writer, and activist in Brazil. It's a, a very famous uh, uh, figure in, 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 in the community and who also uh, a strong activist for women's rights and, and, and LGBT rights and, and so on. And who my, my main interest in for her is uh, how she um, got to maintain the African culture orally. Um, that's, that's the, my main uh, interest in, uh, in that is piece. she she was a proponent of st a strong proponent of um the oral tradition you're saying in terms of african teachings and um yes. and cultural traditions and things like that yes because the religions the african religions uh, uh really got the culture alive and and keep going orally so it is maybe the closed, uh, the closed uh, way to access that, that old culture uh, we somehow lost in, in the colony uh, time. So Got it. So what size will the AR sculpture be when I access it with a QR code? Is it typically, you know, when you have a public bust, it can be anywhere from, you know, a bust is normally sometimes two feet tall or a foot and a half tall, and then, you know, but with AR, you can do whatever you want. So what size are you and the developer planning to make it um, display? We are thinking about a real size, not so big or not so small, like 
like uh, we are boost uh, in, in everyday uh, 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 life public spaces so it's maybe a little bit uh, uh, bigger than, than usual, uh, used to be our head okay so Some you're not going for something that's a spectacle or no, monumental I scale want, i don't want i i want to create some intimacy uh, between the piece and and i don't want to uh, get so big and you know it's something we have approach with some intimacy okay with some intimacy okay got it well fabiano thank you so much for joining us on the show today um, I wish you the best of luck in terms of finding funding for the next phase of Monica Puru VR and, um, and good luck finishing um, development on Mesh Memories, your AR sculpture in the next month. I hope you're able to finish it by the end of August as you plan or the beginning of August as you plan. Um, and thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Lisa. My pleasure. Um, well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, see you next week. Our guest will be Tamara Shogalu, a filmmaker and artist who's based in Amsterdam and divides her time with LA as well. She runs a production company called Edowato Pictures. And we'll be discussing her most recent project, the AR Memorial Unresolved. See you next week. Thank you.